Okay, let's dive in. Uh, as you can see, a lot of progress has been made since the last video. So we'll make a rundown of what you're looking at here and then follow up with uh, s some of the deficiencies and things that worked, things that didn't as I tested it. So uh, just going down from the top, uh, the hopper, biomass hopper. So this is a this is what I call the top pressure port. The next stage is the preheater. So there's a inside and outside layer, as you can see. So that would be the inside diameter, a space, and then that's that's the outside. So you got an inch, an inch jacket around um, the preheater here. So I can dump solvents in here to leach out and then drain it down here. So as this jacket becomes congested with tars, uh, there's a mechanism for cleaning it out. Ideally, I'd put a, I'd put a, like a, a jar or something off here to catch, catch some of the liquids as they're generated. Moving down, this is the, this is uh, the air manifold, I call it. And um, so imagine a kind of square donut shaped uh, mechanism with this inch and a half diameter box tubing. So that forms a, a ring manifold. And on the inside, as the, uh, you'll see the air nozzles uh, shooting into the combustion zone. Refer to the first video for more information on that. Air input, down. Most of what's in here is the reduction zone. So I reduced the reduction zone bottom to about here. So it's, it's not the full, the full length of that, uh, of that area. It only, it comes up about two and a half inches to reduce the size of the reduction zone. Uh, then the bottom is what I call gas accumulator. It's just a big box that catches the ash as it comes down and provides a mechanism for getting the ash out. So biogas out coming up. Here's the first temperature. Um, so we're monitoring the, the gas as it comes out, that temperature. That black thing is a cyclonic filter leverage from a previous project. The gas continues through the preheater, out, down, into the filter. I'll stop there and point out a couple other things. So this is the this is the combustion chamber thermocouple. This is a K thermocouple Inconel, and it um, just goes down and bends down into the combustion chamber. Then on the back, on the back, you'll see the bottom pressure port. I have it out here on a long pipe so that it will, so that it doesn't melt. It keeps the temperature down. Here's the reduction zone thermocouple. Then that yellow thing is a pneumatic vibrator. So it just, you just uh, inject air into there and it spins and there's an eccentric, big ball bearing that causes the whole mechanism to shake, just vibrate a little bit. And that's enough for that, to get the ash to fall down into the, into the catch. And that has a dramatic effect. When I shake the system just a little bit, uh, the pressure and temperature has changed dramatically inside. So it's, it's really doing something inside to, as, to um, I guess, maybe compress all the, uh, the, the biomass that's in there. Not really sure what, but it, it, it dramatically changes pressures and temperatures when I shake. Um, uh, so then um, the filter, nothing fancy. It's just bottom is wood chips followed by gradually more fine shavings. Then the, the top one foot or so has nothing, it's just an airspace. Then, um, so it's all just manual valves at the moment. Um, gas comes up, it gets flared off. So there's a, you'll see that little nub sticking out there. That's a, I gotta replace that, that's a hot surface igniter that ignite, automatically ignites any flare gas uh, that's, that's uh, present there. So I just open that green valve and that 
um, then um, you'll notice I'm using compressed air to generate a vacuum for the system. It's an injector system. So that, that creates the initial vacuum for the system that pulls gases that direction and then flares them off. Then when the temperatures and pressures are right, I switch over to, to the generator. So uh, the generator, the system ran and it worked pretty well. The, the generator started pretty easily. It ran for probably six hours. It revealed a lot of problems. The biggest problem is that it's, it's not putting out anywhere near that kind of power level. So it's only getting maybe 2,500, 3,000 watts of power out. Um, and it's probably just the energy density of the, of the, of the biogas. I'm not really sure why, but anyway, that's, it just, it just doesn't have the horsepower that you get from propane or gasoline or natural gas. Um, the other big issue is that it's generating more tar gas than it should, and it's clogging up the, the, air, the intake valve on the, on the generator gets stuck. When I, when I shut down and let it cool down, whatever tar is in there solidifies and just freezes up that intake valve and I have to get in with choke cleaner and, and clean that up. So that's, um, that's a big drawback. Um, the, the other issue that it's having is that, as I've alluded to, it's generating more tar than it should um, to, to really be feasible. And I think that a lot of it has to do with the geometry of the combustion chamber. I think that the, the flame, the um, the actual combustion is, is, um, is con confined to an area about the size of a softball or so inside the, it's a really tight, a really hot area in the combustion area. Um, and so that's providing a path around where, where tar gases can get around the combustion zone and then down, um, without getting consumed, without getting burned up which is the goal. So I think I'm gonna to have to revisit how I introduce air into the combustion zone. So uh, as you can see, everything's clamped together, obviously for development purposes. I can take it apart pretty easily. Uh, later, things it'll be more permanent. I'll put screws in and like here where, uh, but it does work and it, and it uh, the good thing about it is, is that when that hopper is anywhere near full, it will run for days, which is the goal. That was the overriding goal is that, that this thing be able to run relatively unattended for a good 72 hours or so, just cranking away. Otherwise, it's really just not, it's not reasonable. It's more of a novelty. So that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, I appreciate any comments. If you have any ideas on how to uh, reduce the tar gas, what I can do. That would be appreciated. Uh, that's it. Thanks.